Hey everyone, I'm Matt. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm super excited. We're answering a question that I get every single day at the RV dealership. Which one is better, a Class A gas motorhome or a Class A diesel motorhome? Well, in this video, we're gonna answer that. I'm gonna go over all the differences. We're gonna go over the positives and negatives of each, and I'm gonna tell you my personal recommendation of which one you should get. We're starting in three, two, one. Hey everyone again, welcome back to another video. My name is Matt from Matt's RV Reviews. On this channel, we do reviews of brand new RVs from Class C's all the way up to Class A diesels. And the question that I get every single day is which one's better, a Class A gas motorhome or a Class A diesel motorhome? Well, I'm gonna make that very easy. The answer is the Class A diesel. That's not the question you should be asking yourself. The question that you should be asking yourself is, is a Class A diesel worth 60 to $100,000 more than a Class A gas motorhome? So let's get into the differences and let me know at the end of this video what opinion you have on which one somebody should get by leaving down in the comments below. Let's begin. And just so everybody knows, I'm, I'm only sticking to seven key points. And each key point, every single one of them has an exception. So this just appeals to the masses, okay? So the very first point I'm gonna make is price, okay? Again, we've already answered the question, the diesel is better. But is diesel worth the 60 to $100,000 price increase from a gas motorhome? So to generalize it, gas motorhomes start anywhere from a 79.9 entry level basic class A gas all the way up to 159.9 for a class four luxury level gas motorhome. I do have a video going over the different tier levels of level one through four. I will link that in the description below also at the end of this video. You're gonna wanna watch that if you don't know that, that goes over the differences between an $80,000 motorhome and a $150,000 motorhome, okay? Whereas diesel motorhomes, diesel motorhomes really start at about $160,000 sale price for a cheap, cheap, not cheap, but for an entry level one. And they go all the way up to $2.5 million. Now, for those of you who don't have the $2.5 million, Generally, the most common price point of diesel motorhomes, like this one, fall in between two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars for the diesel. So, price is definitely number one thing to consider. Number two is going to be the length of the motorhome, and I don't mean the length of the number that you see on the side of it. I mean the true length. So, a Class A motorhome, what defines it? is any motorhome that's built on an F53 chassis that looks like this, okay? The smallest one that I know of is about 28 feet true length tip to tip. So that's gonna be the smallest length Class A you can get. And again, those are generally the ones in the lower price points. All the way up to one of the biggest Class A gas motorhomes like this one here. This one here is a 36H, but it's actually 38 feet tip to tip, making this one of the longest Class A gas motorhomes that you can get. Whereas a true Class A diesel, the shortest one that I'm personally familiar with is going to be 34 feet tip to absolute tip. Again, there might be some that will call themselves shorter than that, but really they start at the 34 feet length and then they go all the way up to a 45 foot tag axle motorhome, but that's the absolute biggest motorhome that you can get. So number three is going to combo with number four. It's going to be the ride and the noise, okay? So first, let's talk about the ride a little bit. A gas motorhome has spring suspension, generally, okay? And so it rides great. We're gonna drive this in just a few minutes but it, it still rides just fine. But part of the difference is with the F53 chassis also going to be the wheels. The wheels for a gas motorhome start at the 19.5s and they go up to the 22.5 wheels. But another thing to consider is the actual tire size 
which is going to make a difference while you're driving. This is one of the biggest tires on a gas motorhome, and it's a 255-80 R22.5. Where diesel motorhomes, diesel tires get a lot bigger. Now this one isn't too much bigger. It's a 275-80 R22.5, but I've seen them all the way up to 315s, and the bigger the rubber, the bigger the tire, the better the ride's going to be. Great, so number four is the noise, okay? Right now, I'm sitting in front of a V10 motorhome, okay? And the reason why I wanted to do that is because they're both Integras and they're both around the same size. I will have another video comparing the Ford V8 engine, the new 7.3 liter V8, to this Ford V10, but not this video because that it's gonna be so close. So right now, I'm standing outside with a decibel reader and I'm averaging about 87 decibels being right out front of the motorhome. Now, if I hit the reset button and I sit inside, this is just while it's idling, we're averaging 85 decibels. That's not bad at all. This is just us idling. Uh, we are going to drive this in a few seconds, but really not that bad. So now we're at the diesel motorhome, and you know, it's funny because the diesel engine is louder, but because you can see right here that uh, the engine's in the back and you're not driving up front, you know, we're averaging 58 decibels. And then here's what makes the real difference. We're averaging, when I'm quiet, 60 decibels uh, on the inside. Again, uh, diesel motorhome is going to be a little bit better insulated, the engines in the back and everything. Great, so now we're going to drive both of them to see how they drive and to listen to the noise while we're driving down the road. And before we do that, I have a huge favor to ask everyone. If you could please leave down in the comments below and smash the thumbs up on this video. The more people who do that, the more YouTube likes to promote videos like this to other RVers and we appreciate it. And right now we're at like 93,000 subscribers and we really need your help and support to hitting our goal of 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So make sure you do that. We're gonna drive the gas one first and then we're gonna drive the diesel. Okay, you ready? Now I know we're not going super fast, but I was revving up the RPMs pretty high. Now what I will say is with driving this motor home, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, it's springy, you know what I'm saying? Whereas when you're driving a diesel motor home, it's, it's like sitting on a cloud. So there is that difference as well. Let's drive this one down that same track. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with us um, making a U-turn and then driving down the straightaway. Something to remember as well, with a gas motor home, your tires are above you right here. Like they're more right here. Whereas with the diesel, they do kind of sit behind you. So the turning radius is a little different as well. Here we go with the straightaway. So there you go. And then believe it or not, when you're driving on the highway, they both, both do a pretty good job when they get up to speed. It's not necessarily once they're going 50, 60 miles an hour, it's more about getting up to that speed. So number five is exterior storage, okay? With a Class A gas motorhome, again, they are built on an F53 chassis, so you don't get the same type of storage you don't get what's called pass-through storage, okay? Now, this motorhome's a big one. Again, it's one of the biggest Class A gases, so it is going to give you the best storage on a gas motorhome. 
Now check this out. This is pass-through, right? But this is not what somebody would consider pass-through storage, okay? But you can technically pass through, but the storage is always gonna be a little bit more limited. Still pretty darn good, but it's not gonna be the type of storage that you'll get on what's, this is called a raised rail chassis. Now, there is some diesels with a straight rail chassis, some of the more entry level ones, but when you get to the next level up, you get what's called a raised rail. And that's the chassis right there. And so you're able to get a very nice slide out tray. Now, this particular model is a very small class A diesel. So it only has this one tray, but there are some of them that gives you like four bays, with two sliding trays, and it has massive exterior storage. We only have two more, so stick around and then I'll give you everybody my closing thoughts. Number six is going to be towing, okay? Your towing hitches. Gas motorhomes, majority of them are rated for 5,000 pounds. They have 5,000 pound hitches and they can safely tow 5,000 pounds. Now, in a few exceptions, could you ever tow more than 5,000 pounds? Some manufacturers will put an 8,000 pound hitch on that motorhome, but you have to be careful with your cargo carrying capacity and everything on the gas motorhome if you did want to tow more than 5,000 pounds. My recommendation is that you never do. Um, also, cargo carrying capacity has a big deal. Gas motorhomes, because it's an F53 chassis, you can only you can only have so much cargo. Whereas, so you know, you'll see these with 1,500 to 3,000 pounds cargo carrying capacity, depending on the floor plan and the actual chassis size. You know, the chassis weights vary from you can get as low as 18.5 all the way up to a 26,000 pound chassis. Whereas the diesel motorhomes, you can get 45, 50, 60,000 pound chassis. Um, and so they can carry a lot more cargo on it. And then the towing capacity for a diesel. Now check it out, just because it's a diesel pusher does not automatically mean it can tow 10, 15,000 pounds. In some entry level motorhomes, they can still only tow 5,000 pounds because they have a smaller horsepower engine with a smaller transmission. You are still gonna get that nice ride of a diesel, but it can't tow it. So a very few, diesel pushers can tow 5,000 pounds. Also, very few diesel pushers can tow 20,000 pounds. There are some out there, but the majority of class A diesel pushers, it's they're easily capable of towing 10,000 pounds. Some of them able to tow 15,000 pounds. Now listen, this part's very important. Always weigh your motor home. Always calculate the GVWR and the GCWR yourself before you tow anything. Finally, number seven is going to be ownership costs, okay? It will always be more money to own this diesel motor home than this gas motor home, okay? Oil changes are more expensive, but you have to do them less. Fuel is generally more expensive than the fuel on gas motor homes, but that fluctuates all the time. And then something else I do wanna get out of the way a lot of people will say diesels get better mi gallon, miles per gallon than a gas motor home. I don't see that being true. I feel like they all get, you know, the same. It's horrible miles per gallon. I call it smiles per gallon because you're having a good time. And yes, technically one is going to get better gas mileage than the other, but it's so close. Even myself, I've been in the industry for seven years. I would not feel comfortable telling you one's getting more than the other. A lot of it has to do with how you drive. Also, when things go wrong with these diesel pushers, you know, I, I mentioned a minute ago about the cargo carrying capacity. A diesel motorhome is going to have a nicer interior than a gas motorhome because when you get the Corian countertops, the porcelain tile floors, the nice veneers and everything. Quality equals weight, and a gas motorhome can just not support the weight of that like a diesel motorhome can. So with that said, that's another reason why the price is gonna be a little bit more money. Also, the tire size. I mean, to replace a 255-80 R16 or R22.5, it's going to be a lot cheaper 
than to replace a 275-80R 22.5, let alone if you get the 315s, and let alone if you get the tag axles. You know, you get the tag axles, you're going from six tires to 10 tires, okay? Um, diesel's always going to be more money to maintain, and that just kind of wraps up the whole video. The, the real thing is money. Again, if you're watching this video and you just want to know which one's better, the diesel motorhome is always better than the gas motorhome. My opinion on the matter, what I like to ask everybody, keeping price points real, okay? So let's say you're looking at a Class A gas motorhome like this, call it 150, and a Class A diesel motorhome like this, call it 250. Now these aren't the real prices, I'm just throwing numbers out there. The real question isn't which one's better. This one is better, it tows better, it looks better, it drives better, it sounds better, okay? But the real question is, is it $100,000 better than this motorhome? Because here's the deal, folks. You can still go camping. You're still getting bad gas mileage. You still have your sofa, your bedroom, your toilet, your shower. And you can still tow a Jeep or something lightweight behind your motorhome. And you still have plenty of storage. And at the end of the day, you're going camping. My philosophy, I personally, and this uh, coming as an RV salesman, I want everybody to understand. Please, I want to disclose something for you. I make a lot more money selling this one <laughs> than I do selling this one. But even with that, I personally prefer the gas motorhomes. The only reason, in my opinion, I can justify somebody spending that more money on this if they're full timing in it and or putting 10 15 20 000 miles a year on that motorhome then my opinion the ends justify the means but trust me here's what i want to say this video is not to tell somebody buy the gas motorhome over the diesel motorhome this video is just to educate you let you know the differences in whatever you decide me i will be here at general rv or any of my comrades or whatever you want to call them will be here at general rv and we'll be here happy to assist you on whatever path you decide for yourself the one thing i like to tell absolutely everybody there's not a single rv that's ever been made that hasn't not been sold there's a lot of people that prefer the emblem there's a lot of people that prefer the riata xl so it's just completely up to you. It's all about how you camp and how you plan on RVing. The one thing I recommend, don't buy an RV based off of what your friends are saying. Oh, my friend said I have to have a diesel. No, watch this video, go to a dealership, figure out how much time you're gonna be spending in the motorhome and make the decision that works best for you, your family and financially. Thank you absolutely everybody so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, again, please smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. We're trying to hit our goal of 100,000 subscribers. Also, this is a new segment on our show, the Frequently Asked Questions segment. So if we hit 750 comments, last time it was 500 comments, so this one we're gonna go up a bit, 750 comments, I will make a video comparing a class a diesel pusher to a class super to a super c diesel motorhome and i will go over all the differences with you and if you to wrap it all up so sorry everybody if you have a question that you want me to answer on the show and make a video for you just send me an email everybody go to mattsrvreviews.com sign up for the newsletter join us on facebook thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time